What do you think this color is closest to in natural uh, elements? Like those little dead pine needles on the ground in the forest. That's true. Dead pine needles. That's what we're gonna yeah, call it. Dead, dead pine needles. Another episode of Mop Point Three Garage. Finally got the truck painted. So in my last video, I hope you enjoyed that hour-long footage of every step in painting this Bronco. Um, oh wait a minute, no, you didn't see that because I filmed the entire thing and then the SD card that that video was on, uh, it like exploded, deleted. Don't know what happened to it, but the card cannot be read at this point. So. If I ever am able to uh, extract the information on that SD card, I will post it, uh, but uh, right now it looks like it's gone forever. So what you have now is a post-mortem on the paint job, even though I still have part of it coming up. Um, so tip number one, uh, at least for, for my use, one gallon of color did not do as much of the truck as I thought. Originally, I was going to paint everything uh, Dust Canyon Copper, including the inside and the under. Uh, I realized that a gallon is probably going to be light for that, so I decided to undercoat um, the bottom. And then I was just going to do everything in uh, Dust Canyon Copper on the top. Uh, but then retracted that again because I thought, well, still maybe a gallon's not going to do that whole thing. So I'll take the entire interior out and I'll bedliner that. And then surely a gallon is going to do the rest of the vehicle. It does not, or it did not for me. Um, I got uh, the outside of the body done uh, uh, with exception of the outer skin of the doors, the outer skin, or I should say the top side of the hood, uh, and then some other parts and pieces. Uh, so... I can't buy those, I can't buy that color and quartz from Eastwood, uh, so I had to buy another gallon. So because I have to buy another gallon, I'm going to do the interior Dust Canyon Copper as well. Uh, but then I'll have, I should have plenty of paint even to touch things up and have some for the future in case I screw something up. Um, but that's the story now. Uh, everything else is for the most part done though, so let's go take a tour. Come on in the garage. So the first thing that you'll notice, um, there's a lot of orange peel in this paint. And um, I think it had to do with the fact that I had to buy a new compressor. I think you guys saw that in my last video. So while we're talking about the air compressor, Air Compressor Saga Part 3 is I got a new air compressor, a new Husky air compressor. Uh, it is um, 30 gallons, 175 PSI, uh, significantly longer run time than my last one. The problem is, is that I got it home and it, the, the pressure switch does not work. So... It ran to 175 PSI and I was about three feet away from it with my back turned to it, prepping the truck when the pressure relief valve uh, kind of blew um, or released. And uh, 175 PSI came pouring out of that thing and about sent me through the roof. Um, it took me probably 20 minutes to calm down after that whole scenario. I've never had that happen to me, but wasn't expecting it. The pressure switch does not work. So I have to turn it on and off right now until I get the parts to, um, to, to operate it. Because of that, I forgot and let it run below 30 PSI while I was painting, which is what I think is causing that extraordinary amount of orange peel right there. Now, if you come down here, not quite as bad. Uh, that's after I let it pressurize again. So now the good part is that I've got um, three full heavy coats on this body. So I'll be able to sand that out or should be able to sand that out with no problem. And if I do have a problem with it, I'll just add more clear up, bought another gallon of it. Um, but most of the truck, other than that, is actually in really good shape. You've already seen the jams. So this is clear, uh, cleared everything. Okay, front of the car, including the uh, fishing rod, broken fishing rod uh, extender that holds the window, the windshield frame up so I could paint everything without it touching or falling and hitting the, uh, the front clip. And then I thought the tailgate turned out really good. So here's the tailgate. We'll run across that real quick. Nice. Yeah, that turned out pretty good. 
That's got three coats of clear. I'm gonna do every, I'm gonna do all the outside panels in three coats. There's one door right there. Little bit of orange peel, but not too bad. <clears throat> and then I did the under side of each fender, the underside of the hood, and then obviously the other inside door scan there. And then I finished completely the dash. So the dash is ready to go in. And then that's the back side of the grill. Just in case you're wondering what I use for this paint job, I'll show you here. We've got some low VOC urethane base coat in Dust Canyon Copper from Eastwood. And then the four to one premium show clear. The first shipment was uh, $600 in paint uh, because I had to get all the necessities that go with it, measuring cups and you know filters and stuff like that. Um, the second round, which I just purchased that'll be here next week, was $400 because I was just buying paint and clear. So um, then it will be like done, done. And uh, we're still playing with the opportunity of taking this uh, Bronco out to um, Bronco Super Celebration West next week. Um, and just, you know, showing it off a little bit, I guess. You know, there's really not much to see. It's not built. It'll be on the chassis if we bring it. Uh, I just don't know if it's going to be interesting enough to do. But we're going to go out there regardless. So tips on the the first, my first paint job. I'm not even going to call them tips because um, you can watch, you know, tons of paint education videos. And they'll teach you how to paint a truck. So you didn't need to see this to find that out. But... Uh, as a novice and someone who uh, has made a career of not reading directions. Uh, I like to just find things out on my own and, and uh, uh, suffer the consequences from it. Um, I think overall I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Knowing your air compressor uh, would be the first one. Um, new air compressor, I didn't know the air compressor, uh, but now that I'm familiar with it, I have parts coming, things are going to run correctly, I think I could probably do the clear much better. Second tip would be to know your paint. The paint that I was using is Dust Canyon Copper. It had that black like oil-like substance in it. Um, and it rises, it looks like it rises to the top of the paint to give it a, a patinaed look. Almost like uh, copper would be like a copper penny, a brand new copper penny. Uh, this color is, to me, looks like an older copper penny. So it's got the kind of the black patina on it. And that's what this looks like. When I hit it with Scotch-Brite to scuff it, that black started to come off a little bit and it did make the color variation different. So th this to me seems like one of those paints you, you, you paint and then you clear over the top of it. You don't sand it, you don't color sand it, you don't scuff it, you don't do any of that. So um, I kind of repainted that one section, cleared the truck um, over the top of that and, and it looks amazing to me. It looks absolutely amazing. Tip number three, uh, this tent is a 20 by 10. And the way that I'm doing this with all the panels off, there's not near enough room. Uh, so I end up having to keep the truck in the tent, and then I would have to shuttle parts into the front of the tent to paint, and then bring it back out, and then shuttle another one in, and then shuttle it out. The moving of those caused a big problem, um, especially because I don't have a lot of patience, so I didn't want them to dry before I moved them. Uh, so uh, although I don't think we did any damage to the paint on any of them, uh, it caused a lot of stress uh, between me and I trying to get those things moved. So um, I would probably, if I'm gonna do this again, I would probably get two of these tents and I would put one right next to the other because they're 60 bucks a piece. If I had spent $120 um, and, and was able to paint in the second booth or the second garage, uh, it would have made all the difference in the world. So for the Bronco to be named later, right over there, that one is getting a teal paint job and so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to order another one of these tents. I'm going to attach it to this one so that I have two bays to paint in. Uh, one for just parts and then one for the truck itself. And then there'll be a, uh, I can drop these curtains down in the middle and the overspray will get on one versus the other. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm learning from this process. And, and yeah, that's excessive, but uh, it's still smaller than a normal paint booth. What is number four? I had four, but I don't remember the fourth one was. Um, Ventilation, oh yeah, yes, number four, ventilation. So you can see in the front, I put fans at one end pushing, and then I had fans on the other end pulling. Uh, the fans on 
this side that where the in, the induction were smaller than the fans going out, which somewhat created a negative um, air pocket inside of here, which was fine. The problem is, is that the pushing of this air, uh, I noticed that even with filters on there, I found some debris on the truck as I was painting it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the fan, I'm going to keep the vents in there, but I'm going to pull the, the extra fans off of that side, put them on this side. So I have four fans for the exhaust, no fans for the induction, and then I'm going to leave the door to the house open uh, because when we... It's weird how this works, but we have the door to the house open and the back door open. Uh, with this garage door shut, it creates a positive pressure going this direction and it actually will create air movement through the tent, even without the fans running. Um, obviously, we have to pick it on a day where we get a south wind, which was most days. Um, but I'm going to try that on the next paint job and maybe even when I go to finish the paint on this. So, so that would be, that's my fourth tip to myself. All right, so we have a subscriber here, Cameron, from... Uh, Yukon, Oklahoma. Yukon, and what are you doing in Colorado? Well, uh, we're going to Black Canyon of the Gunnison. It's a camp out that we're going to do for my birthday. That's a pretty cool place, too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, welcome to Colorado. Yeah. So now that you see the Bronco that's finally painted, what do you think of the color? I think it's great. I think it fits the Bronco because I like, I've always liked or like the reddish orange Broncos. Yeah. They're great looking. Yeah. I mean. What would, what do you think this color is closest to in natural uh, elements? Like, would you maybe say like pine wood? bark? Pine bark. Pine I like wood. That. Pine wood. Yeah. I like that too. Pine. Either that or those little dead pine needles on the ground in the forest. That's true. Dead pine needles. That's what we're going to yeah, call it. Dead, dead pine needles. Yeah. That's going to be the official name of the Dead pine, needle, pine needles. Yeah. What questions did you have? Well, uh, why do you take apart like all of your cars that you own? Because I'm dumb. Don't be like me. Okay. If you buy a car when you become an adult, okay. drive the car. Don't take it apart. Okay. Yeah, fix one thing mm -hmm. and then drive it some more. Then fix another thing and then drive it some more. And uh -huh. then fix another thing and drive it some more. Yeah. Don't take all the cars apart. Because yeah. I can tell you, you're going to work, you're going to have a job, you're going to have a family, and then you're going to have to take care of your dad. And all three of those are full-time jobs. And if you take apart a, a car, that's another full-time yeah. job. So that's going to be four full-time jobs. Yeah, you and you have one, two, three, three fully taken apart, almost fully, um, pretty much taken apart. Yeah, three, three completely disassembled vehicles. Yeah, yeah. And that's my life right now. Well, like I said, don't don't be like me. Yeah, as soon as you <laughs> assemble them. You'll be back to normal, though. We will be, yes, yes. And, and we'll have when next time you come out, you'll have. Broncos to drive. Actually, you won't because you're going to be 13. Yeah. So you have to wait until you're 16 and then you can have Broncos to drive when you come out here. Uh, we'll go on a four-wheeling trip. How about that? Yeah. All right. That yeah. sounds cool. That sounds great. Well, thanks, Cam. Thanks. Have a good birthday. Thank Enjoy you. Black Canyon the Gunnison. I will. Thanks. All right. So I guess that's it for this episode. Um, we're not done with the paint yet. Uh, this was just kind of a, a video to show you that I did paint it. Um, if you're going to be at Super Celebration, um, then uh, great. Look look for us. We'll be out there. Maybe we'll have this truck out there. Maybe we won't. Um, but we'll be walking around. Mandy and I will be walking around for two days. We're going to get some drone footage, take a lot of video and pictures of, uh, of people's rides. Do a little uh, video of that to, to post onto this channel. That's a wrap for my point through garage. Stick around. It's just getting good.